as we speak, an army of people working under a civil contractor is building what will hopefully be the last house I will call home in this lifetime. A few days ago, I had just finished inspecting a portion of the work and I was pointing out things that were not perfect and needed attention. The contractor kept trying to remind me that the work is far from over, but I was adamant that perfection was an ongoing process and not something achieved only at the end. Now, after inspection, I left the property and I started walking away. A few minutes or so later, I reached a vantage point, a point a slightly higher altitude compared to my property. And as I looked back at the property, I realized I hadn't been looking at the complete picture when I was at the site. The construction speed achieved by the contractor was fantastic. The project seems to be surprisingly running ahead of schedule. The house was taking the shape my wife and I had dreamt of. Just as I was ruminating on my fault-finding behavior a few minutes ago, I remembered a story shared by Mark Schenk of Anecdote many years ago. Let me share that story with you. Hi, welcome back to Stories at Work, a series where I tell real stories from across the world that you can use when you want to drive home a business point. Our website, storyworks.in, already has over a hundred stories and we are adding one every week. Let's start today's story. In 2009, Mark was coaching a senior government executive named Steve. One day, Mark walked into Steve's office for a coaching session. On one wall of Steve's office was a huge whiteboard filled with various notes and ideas. What caught Mark's eye was a note on the top right hand corner that simply said bathroom story. Mark smiled and asked Steve, what on earth is a bathroom story? Steve chuckled and began to explain. Well, I'm gathering my leaders because we are about to embark on a significant culture change. I plan to kick things off with this story. My wife and I have lived in the same house for many years and over time we've renovated it to the point where it's perfect for us. We love it. But for, for years we could never settle on a design for the master bathroom. So it languished unfinished. Last year, we found a designer who came up with a plan that we loved. So we hired a builder and started the renovation. I had to go overseas because, before it was finished, but the builders promised me that by the time I came back, it would be done. I was pretty excited when I got home that Friday night. As I walked in through the door, my wife greeted me and led me down the corridor, threw open the bathroom door and I walked into our brand new, beautifully designed bathroom. But then I looked up at the top right corner and noticed some grouting that wasn't finished. You know, the thin layer of cement used to fill cracks and crevices in the masonry that was still visible. So I raised my voice and said, what's going on? Why is the grout still visible? My wife literally grabbed me by the ear, dragged me down the corridor, back out of the front door, opened it and pushed me outside. Then she said, let's try that again, shall we? We walked back down the corridor and she threw open the door again. I looked at the most magnificent bathroom exactly as we had planned and imagined. It was beautiful. So I said, and the grout? She replied, yep, the builders knew it had to be perfect for you and it was too wet to finish the grouting today. They're coming back tomorrow morning and it'll take them half an hour to do those finishing touches. Later, as we, we were sitting on the couch with a glass of wine in the evening, my wife was a bit quiet. And then she looked up at me and said, you don't do that at work, do you? And I realized that I did. I was always focusing on the grout rather than the bathroom. Someone would work all weekend on a report and the first thing I'd do on Monday morning was grab my red pen and start correcting it. I was totally focused on the grout. I didn't see the whole bathroom. Steve concluded that story by saying that was a major lesson for me and I want everyone in my organization to understand it. What a story. 
How often do many of us focus on the unfinished grouting instead of the wonderful bathroom? There are many lessons we can derive from this story. The first and the most obvious one is to make sure we are not just focusing on the negative when there are so much huge positives going around. I am not advocating that we in ignore the negatives. But if that's all we are focused on, then it's a pity. It's not about being a stickler for details. You must. But can you see the whole picture? Change is hard and any change program will have hurdles. If we appreciate all the things that are working before we focus on the things that need improvement, we'll all be in a better place. I also think there is a message here about the benefits of reflection. We often have life experiences which we just take in our stride and move on without pausing to reflect. In this story, Steve had help, the prod from his wife asking if Steve demonstrated the same behavior at his workplace. We may not always have the benefit of someone else prodding us. So making a habit of pausing to reflect on life's experiences can teach us vital lessons. I hope you enjoyed that story and if you did, then there are over a hundred more on our website storyworks.in. See you next week. Bye for now.